Hello, my name is Mrs Yeoman and I'm going to take you through our plans for maths revision. In the maths department we have um, Mr Collins who's the second in department, we've got Miss Ferris who's the vice principal but also teaches 11x5, Mr Collins teaches 11x3, Mr Ring teaches 11x6, Mr Porteous x4 and Miss Clulo x1. I myself am the head of department and we've also got Mr Upex, our maths director. The results for uh, 2019 and 20 were really outstanding. So you can see from the chart in front of you that we've been always either getting 90% or over 90% grades four to nine. Now, this last summer, we actually achieved 92%, which matches the highest that we had before, which is amazing, a really, really good result. And it shows all the hard work that our students have been doing. For grades five plus, we got 81%, which was a massive improvement from last year, where we only achieved 75% for that. We also achieved a progress of plus 0.87, which means that on average, every student nearly got one grade more than the government would have expected them to have achieved for the five years that they are at Bydales. For the English and Maths crossover, we achieved 90.4% of students got a 4 plus in English and Maths and 76.9% got a grade 5 plus for English and Maths and their combined progress for English and Maths was plus 0.83, an outstanding result. Let's have a look at, at those results in a little bit more details. For grade four passes, the girls outdid the boys. For grade five plus passes, it was much more even with the boys slightly ahead. Average progress again saw the girls beating the boys. Overall, our results compare very favorably with the national average. As you can see, the number of national average for four plus passes is only 66.6 and the national average for five plus passes was only 45.7. Next, I want to look at the, how the exam is actually made up. So maths has a foundation or a higher tier. And for the foundation, you can achieve a grade one to five, five being a good pass and four being a pass. Now the five is the highest grade you can get for your foundation paper. On the higher paper, the lowest grade you can achieve is a grade four and the highest grade is a grade nine. Let's see how they compare to what the old grades were like if you remember the letter grades. So your grade four pass is really the bottom end of an old C grade, your good grade five pass is halfway between a C and a B grade. The old A grade is actually a grade seven. And then we have the old A, A plus grade is the eight. And the grade nine is really a new grade that they've introduced when they introduced the new specification and to in 2017. Now the foundation work is made up of a quarter number and a quarter ratio and proportion. The ratio and proportion has really gone up, so it's a very important aspect of our maths curriculum. Algebra is on 20% and stats probability is on 15 and so is geometry and measure. For the higher papers, the biggest Proportion is on algebra at 30% and then geometry and measure and ratio and proportion both make up 20% each and stats and probability and number are slightly reduced to 15% each. Now the, diff the other difference for our new specification is that we have non-routine questions. So where in the past we would have had something like the question on the left, which is more where it specifies that it's going to be Pythagoras. So if we know it's going to be Pythagoras, it will be much easier to 
access the information in your brain and therefore find the solution of how to solve this problem. In the new examinations, it's more like the problem on the right, where you might still need to use Pythagoras, but it's not mentioned anywhere. So you need to have a deeper understanding of the topic. So you recognize that you're going to have to cut up this shape and introduce a right angle triangle into it to find the length of the slanting side. Here we have another example of these new questions. So the question talks about a triangle and a trapezium and asking for the area of the trapezium. However, in order to solve it, we need to work on similar shapes to be able to find a new length. So again, it isn't mentioned in the wording and it's not obvious from the diagram. So we need to have a deep understanding which recognizes that that's what we need to do how we will achieve this success. We are going to achieve it through regular assessment and staple challenges. We'll talk a little bit more about those later, about analysis grids for each exam paper. So we as teachers can see exactly where the strengths and weaknesses lie and therefore adjust the homework or even maybe cover a topic a little bit more in a lesson. We also have option maths. We have maths tutor groups, one-to-one -one provision, and after school maths. We also have a close look at the sets and if we feel students would be, it would be more beneficial for them in a different sets, we could move sets. We have holiday revision session and online revision materials on Hegarty Maths, as well as the home learning that we're going to provide. As a department, we also provide free revision guides and workbooks. So factors could consider with results. Are they attending school regularly or punctual to lessons? And if they have to self-isolate, are they completing the home learning tasks? Are they prepared for lessons and ready to learn? Are they motivated and taking advantage of all the help that is on offer? And are they organizing their time? Attendance is a really important aspect of this this particularly the after school math sessions so the students can actually catch up on any learning that they've missed. Are they starting to revise independently and how effective is their revision? Have they produced a revision timetable and are sticking to it or are they using the revision timetable that we've provided? Are they spending enough time on their Hegarty homework? And are they asking for help from teachers or peers if they need it? Do they complete their holiday revision papers? And are they using their revision guides and workbooks on a weekly basis? So Hegarty is a big part and Hegarty is a website where we set their homework. Now we've got here a page that shows how a student has performed. It's really clear to see that this student has studied for 0.9 hours, but actually he hasn't watched any videos. So the important thing with Hegarty is it provides videos for any quizzes that the students are asked to complete, but they can also use it as a revision facility. So the videos are there to help them go through the topic and maybe plug any gaps that they might have in their learning. So as we go through the quiz, you can see to the left, it provides a video and underneath the video, it provides building blocks. So if the students are struggling with that particular topic, they, it guides them to additional videos that they can have a look at beforehand to make it easier. It gives us a full analysis of how they've performed on all their topics. And it also allows them to send their teachers a message asking for support on any particular questions. We as a department provide every student with a revision workbook and a revision guide and the revision guide will be provided by the end of September. The revision workbook we're going to provide later on in the year around Christmas time and we will provide it with a set timetable of how to use it. So the revision guides have a really good clear summary of each topic and then the workbook provides some questions matching the topics with answers provided in the back. 
we will be handing out a revision workbook plan and that will start as I mentioned before later on in the year so the students will be asked to work through a number of chapters or pages in the revision guide and then to complete the page numbers in the workbook the revision plan will also provide students with Hegarty clip numbers so they can work through it they can then tick it off as they've completed it and the teachers will be checking that and this will continue through once they've received their workbook revision plan the work will continue all the way through to their exams okay it gives the number of the clip as i've mentioned before and it allows the students to just make a note to see which topics they need a little bit more help with or they actually need to work on again it also gives them the page number of the workbook. All students regularly complete a staple challenge. A staple challenge is really the first half of a paper under exam conditions. The idea is that the students need to secure the easier 40 marks at the beginning of the paper in half an hour. The next half an hour is then spent reviewing their work. This provides students with the confidence that in the first half an hour of the exam, they can already make a big difference to the number of marks that they're going to get. And it leaves them then with an hour to tackle the harder questions towards the back of the paper. Staple challenges will be completed both for higher and foundation students. Thank you very much for listening to me. Goodbye.